Stock Investing for Dummies by Paul Lajanovic. I want to start by showing you the contents at a glance. Part one is the essentials of stock investing. Part two, before you start buying. Part three, picking winners. Part four, investment strategies and tactics. Part five, the part of tens. That is the book, but here is the table of contents. This goes a little deeper, surveying the world of stock investing, taking stock of your current financial situation and goals, uh, defining common approaches to stock investing, and so forth. This is a good place to start in any book. As you can see, there are a lot of chapters. A lot of information is covered in this book. I think this book reads like a textbook. That's how detailed it is. You could pause the video at any point and look at this. Let's see. And then part five, the part of tens. Ten ways to profit in a bear market. Bear market means the market is down. Stocks are lower. A bull market is good. I just took some things from the book, added them here, like understanding the basics. The basics of stock investing are so elementary that few people recognize them. When you lose track of the basics, you lose track of why you invested to begin with. And part one of this book helps you grasp these basics. Knowing the risk and volatility involved. Assessing your financial situation. Understanding approaches to investing and seeing what exchange-traded funds have to offer, or ETFs. The bottom line in stock investing is that you shouldn't immediately send your money to a brokerage account or go to a website and click Buy Stock. The first thing you should do is find out as much as you can about what stocks are and how to use them to achieve your wealth-building goals. Do your homework. It's boring, but it will get you far. And the two primary types of stock are common and preferred stock. Now, preparing to buy stocks. Essentially, you need to read a lot of books first. Or if you know somebody, maybe you have a mentor or a friend who is in the stock market, they might be able to help you as well. Sharpening your investment skills. Now, understand why you want to invest in stocks. Now, ask yourself, why are you doing this? And timing your buys and sells does matter. Terms like overbought and oversold can give you an edge when you're deciding whether to purchase or sell a stock. Technical analysis is a way to analyze securities through their market activity. Um, do some research. Understand and identify what's up with the big picture. Use investing strategies like the pros do. And so forth. Chapter 2. Taking stock of your current financial situation and goals. So yeah, you want to do inventory of your financial situation. And here, establishing a starting point by preparing a balance sheet. Learning how to read a balance sheet is very important. Step one, make sure you have an emergency fund. You know, make sure you have a little bit of money left over just in case you lose your job or... Maybe there's an accident or there's a 
fire in your house, whatever it is, you need money to back you up, to fix whatever those problems are. The author says three to six months worth is usually enough to get you through the most common forms of financial disruption, such as losing your job. That's important to know. List your assets in descending order of liquidity. Liquid assets aren't references to beer or cola. Instead, liquidity refers to how quickly you can convert a particular asset, something you own that has value, into cash. That's what it means. Listing personal assets in descending order of liquidity. This gives you an idea of what you should be doing. Step three, list your liabilities. Liabilities are your debt, like credit card bills, mortgage payment. Those are liabilities. Let's see. And you can pause this anytime and read what I, I copied and pasted here. Step four, calculate your net worth. Your net worth is an indication of your total wealth. You can calculate your net worth with the basic equation. Total assets minus total liabilities equals net worth. Step five, analyze your balance sheet. Let's see. And there's all kinds of questions you should answer. Chapter four, recognizing risk and volatility. Exploring different kinds of risk, financial risk, interest rate risk, market risk, inflation risk, tax risk, political and governmental risk, personal risk, emotional risk. Chapter five, stock investing through ETFs or exchange traded funds. So when it comes to stock investing, there's more than one way to do it. Buying stocks directly is good. Sometimes buying stocks indirectly is equally good or even better, especially if you're risk averse. Buying a great stock is every stock investor's dream. But sometimes you face investing environments that make finding a winning stock a hazardous pursuit. For 2020 to 2021, prudent stock investors should definitely consider adding ETFs to their wealth building arsenal. So this book was published a few years ago, but that's not a big deal. The information is still valid today. So I hope this video got you started. I definitely urge you to read the book. You know, just because it says for dummies doesn't mean that it's literally for dummies, <laughs> as you know. It would be cheaper than buying an actual textbook from a college or somewhere online because they're so expensive. I think this book cost me $10 on eBay. So I would take that route. Anyway, I hope this helps and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.